Hello chat and welcome to another episode of Across the Board. Tonight is episode 9. I'm your host MJ and tonight I will be talking all about breeding and my breeding strategy as well as some alternative breeding strategies. Um, some strengths and weaknesses that I see within those. Uh, nothing is obviously guaranteed because we don't know how these foals are going to perform. So more on that a little bit before we get started. Usual disclaimer. Nothing is financial advice of any kind. The goal of this show is to educate and entertain. Web3 games are subject to change at a moment's notice. So please, if you decide to spend your hard-earned money, plan accordingly. I want to give a big shout-out before we dive in tonight. Uh, a little bit of a shorter stream, but Sean vs. All OG, if you by chance are back, I did not see that you tipped until way after uh, the stream ended, my Footium stream. Appreciate you popping in. I appreciate the tip. And yes, all is well. Really, really means a lot. And we'll do a lot to keep the website going. So very, very grateful. Very thankful for that. Um, once again, I dropped the ball in the ticker. No worries there. Um, also, shout out to JG Web 3 another Footium content creator for the follow earlier today. Greatly, greatly appreciated. So tonight, like I said, a little bit of a shorter stream, all about breeding in photo finish. We don't know the results yet. The folds haven't run, but this is something that I've been thinking a lot deeper on lately. I also have some uh, a chart that I want to share with you that kind of has influenced my theory and my thinking and strategy with breeding. So um, yeah, so let's dive right in. So right now on the breeding page here, uh, you've got a lot of different options to sort breeding and from you know what i've kind of seen there are a few schools of thought in terms of breeding so the first being that you can breed purely by grade if you have a lower grade horse it may be tempting to breed up with an s s minus even s plus horse if you can afford to do so uh, another way or another strategy number two that i have written down here is by boosts and preferences or attributes and preferences so looking at uh, boost, looking at track preferences, looking at even the attribute matches, and I know they don't necessarily carry forward, but in from what I understand, my understanding of the articles was that they would have potentially helped the individual grades of those horses. So that's number two. Number three being price. I think this is kind of the weakest factor purely because of how the market has played out. There are so many horses, in my opinion, that are out there and that your mileage is going to vary depending on track preferences and which you're trying to breed for. But there are a handful of lower priced studs on the market. It's not necessarily a huge premium for the best. There are premiums, especially for some of those horses, but it's not necessarily as bad or as high as one may think. Some of you may be asking, what about distance preference? So I look at this as kind of like a subset of both boosts and grades. Maybe it's wrong, maybe it's right. You know, right now at this stage, I think it makes more sense to look at other metrics as I believe good breeding will lead to more consistent distance preferences and consolidated distance preferences down the line. So trying to match this up, I think cool if you can do it and cool if it, you know, becomes something. Um, but that's kind of a lower tier that I kind of bundle that with price. So when I think of breeding for myself, personally, I'm thinking it's either grade. And then you have kind of similar on that same level is attribute and preference, at least for the Gen Zero, you won't necessarily have the attribute access for the future grades. And then in a subset, looking at kind of price and distance preference, you can also do things like inbreeding. But that's not something I'm willing to experiment with at this time. And that's purely just due to the size and composition of my stable. Right now, for me, I kind of put that as a tier three. So tier one being grade boost preferences, tier two being distance preference and price, tier three being inbreeding is kind of how I'm thinking about. This. So how did I breed? Why did I breed? What was my strategy and thought process behind all of this? So if we go Golden Globe, trying to get in contact with Sean for at least two weeks. Um, how you doing, Golden Globe? Good to see you in here. Thanks for popping in. Big, big shout out. OG legend, one of my good friends in the space. Appreciate you bring, being here. How excited are you for Hard Knocks in the Jets? Um, so if we go to my stable, we'll go to my full here, Wabi Sabi's full. 
And this is my only mare, Wabi Sabi. If we go to Bloodline, you can see it was Wabi Sabi, who's a B plus, and Weekend Moderator, who's an A minus. And as a result, the full, yet to be named, is an A minus full. So in looking at kind of my strategy, I went for boost and preference match. Um, again, obviously, you're not necessarily going to see preference match or boost in um, feature generations. Um, I also went for track preference as well here. So both of these horses have very strong track preferences, both three star left, both two and a half star turf and both three star soft. I loved the alignment there as a way of just kind of like solidifying things. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about solidifying because this is a just purely a theory I have. I have no hard data to support it, but I just kind of wanted to double down on it at this time. Um, so strong track pref, matching track pref, strong boosts. Both of these horses were um, 25 boosts. If we go to my breed barn, you can see both horses up top. See, not related, valid breed. Of course, it's going to refresh on me as soon as I load it up, but that's okay. It's going to come right back. Here we are. And so we can see different parents, both same track preference. We can do a comparison of the grades here. We can see how well this lines up. You can look at total races. A fleet figure, there was a big bonus there for weekend moderator. Um, that's the best. The average was, again, higher. Uh, profit wasn't necessarily great. For weekend moderator, but the owner admitted that they kind of ran this horse all over the place. So I don't feel it was optimally run. And there's something that's kind of plaguing left turf soft horses, and that being, you know, just crazy amounts of related horses. Between these two, there's only two total siblings that exist because weekend moderator has none, Wabi has two. So huge, huge, huge. Um, potential long-term gain in there, allowing me to kind of breed out and maybe take some more chances down the line. Um, HE looks at basically, you know, how the horses performed times their profit. Now, these are both negative. HE is really only useful if you want to breed up super high for super high-performing horses. I talked about it in the last stream, but if you want like high-value, high-performance horses, if that's your breeding strategy, I would consider taking a look at HE. Again, it's not a guarantee of any performance of any kind. I will never do that. I don't want to steer anyone in my community in the wrong direction. Um, but that's kind of what that is for. And then both, again, like I said, total boost, very, very high, very high attribute match. So the things that stand out to me here are attribute match, boost, few siblings, improvement in fleet figure, um, and then great just track preference matches across these horses. So why i think this will work and this is kind of the new thing that i want to share with you all is if we look at and we'll circle back to this page in a little bit here but if we look at this chart which has not been shown yet this is not part of any tools this is something i just kind of pulled in for you all um but this is minimum 20 races per group and on the left side here you're going to see the grade that's why the s plus isn't in here just cut off for races the total amount of attribute boosts, it's put into bins of five each. Um, and then you can look at the total track preference boost. So you've got attributes and track across performance. And then these percentages in here are the win place show percentages. And you'll find out that, okay, yeah, there might be like an outlier or two, but the trend as you go up and to the right for all of these grades, the win place show percent increases dramatically. So my kind of thought in my theory is that the grades will come with time, right? Because I, I, Wabi Sabi's a B plus, Offspring is an A minus, so I'm happy with that. And so that's that's an upgrade. It's not a huge upgrade. I'm not going like into S territory yet, but I know I can have fun. I'm racing Hakanai, who's an A minus, and I'm having so much fun racing him. So I figured, well, I've got some great alignment here. And like I pointed out earlier, we've got great alignment in track preferences, improvements in fleet figures, and the 
total boost super high and attribute match is high in a little bit potentially again i think this is something that's going to come into play in future generations more than it does right now potentially is that if you look at the the teal here is weekend moderators finish percent by distance you see it kind of starts to climb as we go up in distance wabi was more of a shorter distance runner i liked her at six uh you know 25 percent finish so i wonder if there is you know at least in this half this six through nine in my mind and again i could be completely wrong chat but in my mind this gives me an idea right away of where i should be running this horse I'm going to be focusing on these distances. I'm going to kind of shun these, even though the sweet figure kind of pops up a little bit here. Um, I'm really going to be focusing on these distances as a, my starting point for how to race the horse. Not only do I have, again, matches, the preference, the boosts, I have a direction of where I want to run this horse, and it was at a 4,000 Derby breed price, which is the minimum breed price. So to me, this made just a lot of sense to match these two horses up to see. Now, what will happen? Don't know. This could be a huge bust. Absolutely could be. You know, I, I don't want to say anything is guaranteed because we just don't know in breeding. But I think this becomes a, for me personally, in my stable makeup, in my kind of bag financial situation, a very um steady process would be the word that i'm looking for a very very steady process so one where again I'm, I'm consolidating we don't have crazy amounts of siblings flying in that i have to worry about it's just a slow let's compact as much as we can into this hopefully genetically that's the thought that's the hope that's the theory and then slowly scale up the grades over time and get to do so now if i see a horse on the market that is an s s plus s minus and that horse has you know few siblings attribute matches and you know i maybe use the breeder board to see has bred well maybe has a high he then yeah i would jump up in that case but I am okay with staying to lower grades, smaller improvements, um, just to see how this goes out and to test this theory of kind of compacting and doubling down on just the attributes, the stats, the grades, the preferences. Um, but I'm getting, definitely looking for a you know strong left turf soft horse. Now, if this next season, if this turns out decently, I'm probably going to hit up Mo and breed again hope that i get a philly and then breed her with hawk and i who i'm having a lot of fun with profitable horse um longer distance preference but same very strong left turf soft in hopes of possibly even getting a three star left turf soft across the board sorry nine star total left turf soft um horse i think that could be really really interesting to see how that plays out Latuda, how you doing? Thanks for popping in. Appreciate you being here. So that's kind of my thoughts um, on why I think this will work. But then in terms of, okay, why, why couldn't this work? Well, is my theory on distance preference is completely unproven, completely unfounded. I could have done better there. And should I have bred for just an overall stronger performer? Because Wabi has strong boost, strong distance preference. Sorry, sorry, strong track preference. So should I have just gone up? And what is the line of if I do go up of what stats that I'm I'm looking for? Like, yeah, the grades will be better, but based off of the chart that I showed here, boost seemed to do something with performance, possibly. So I think my theory is that you know. Players who may be bred up with low boosts, with other low cost, low boost horses, you sure you may have an S, but it may not be a strong performing S comparatively. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. But I could also be totally wrong. We don't know yet. I'm just walking you through 
my thought process on this. Um, so breeding for the sake of breeding up can be costly, especially if you have low boosts or matches. And then breeding preferences and matches alone could mean a longer journey to the top. So again, which method is best? We don't know. We won't know. Oh, this is for Footium. Uh, big shout out to those of you that showed up on Footium. We don't know and we won't know. There's the tab I want. But in just a few short weeks, we will. So for me personally, again, just to recap, I want to consolidate performance and high quality genes. Weekend Moderator is not the best runner in the world. Neither is Wabi Sabi. But they both have strong boosts, strong matches. I think if I can dial in distance preference, we could have a full that outperforms the parents. That's the hope. And low cost breed, very few siblings. So we'll have some great breeding opportunities with this horse and or it could be attractive. Um, I know the grade isn't super attractive, but I, again, I'm willing to slowly grow the grade for the name of potentially dialing in strong performance. Uh, I'm working on trying to save up some derby right now for this next breeding season. Uh, I loved my breed barn tool for trying to identify opportunities. Again, we have EV price, which purely just looks at market price, has nothing to do with performance. So how does this price compare with the grade and track preference of other horses that have the same grade and track preference? Negative in green uh, means it's below the median. If it's zero, it means it's at the median. And if it is red, it is above the median. So potential way to find uh, cheap breeds, that doesn't necessarily mean better breeds. Um, you know, it could be priced at a premium because the horse is amazing. It could be priced at a discount because the horse isn't great. Just another factor to consider. Again, with all of my tools, it's not to say this is exactly how you have to do things. But with whatever strategy you come at this game with, to be able to look at and say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. I have the information here to make the best decision based off of what I want to try to achieve, what my theory currently is. Latuta said, I 100% believe slow is the way to go. If I'm wrong, it is easy to start breeding higher, but if I'm right, it's going to take the people who try to rock it up longer to catch up. That's a good, good point. Um, talking about just the timing of things there, Latuta, I agree. You know, because it is, and, and that is such a good point. Like, it is easy to breed up and grade. Is it necessarily easy to go from a low track preference to high track preference? I feel like the game would not necessarily, I think it would really hurt the longevity of the game if just breeding up and breeding up and just like maxing that up was super quick and super fast. Maybe, maybe not. But then maybe it becomes kind of fun in a different way because you have a more level playing field. It would allow for grades to kind of go away. Um, I know that has been talked about in the past. Yeah, so I'm, I I agree. I think it's easier to walk back the strategy if you go low and slow versus, you know, ramp it up super fast. Um, I think it would definitely be easier to do so because then again, like if you're throwing in, yes, let's say it's, yeah, it's an S average, all the stats are S's. Like, yes, you're throwing in S genes in there but what is the volatility of that if they are lower boost? Again, based off of this chart. This chart could be meaningless. But this is the theory that I am working off of right now and a big driver of why I go low and slow. I, yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, the, the timing, the pacing, that was very well said, Latuta. Really, really appreciate that, uh, that thought, that feedback. I appreciate you sharing that in chat. That's pretty cool. All right. Any other thoughts on breeding chat any concerns um are you excited are there any horses you'd like to evaluate look at we can talk about that now again like i said this is going to be a shorter stream but just kind of wanted to share with you my thoughts and theories on breeding nothing is guaranteed uh but that's just kind of where my head is at again based on my stable composition my current derby that i have kind of where my head is at so let me know what you think. We'll let this go for a minute here. Um, see who else we have in chat. 
Um, we've got some big streams tonight. We have the auction coming up, and we also have uh, Doughboy doing After Dark. So definitely check those out. I think those are going to be very, very huge. I think the auction already happened. If not, it's going on now. Otherwise, uh, check that out. And also definitely check out Doughboy tonight. Let's see if we can pull up Doughboy's uh, tag here so we can... Doughboy 215. Yeah, this is it. Perfect. All right, I'm going to throw this in chat. Chat, definitely uh, give him a follow. He's going to be streaming tonight. Uh, good guy. Great member of the community. Uh, very knowledgeable about horse racing. Real life horse racing, too. So highly, highly recommend you check him out. So yes, chat, that is kind of the basis of my breeding. It probably will change. But we'll see. This is currently where I'm at with my stable. We've got a few weeks left before these foals can race, and then we'll really start to understand, um, have a better idea, at least, of breeding. I doubt we'll crack it. I really hope we don't. I hope we never crack it. But uh, it, it should be a pretty, pretty exciting time. Um, did I get one of my LTS in the race tonight? That's a good question. I did not. They are both exhausted currently. They ran earlier, and... Uh, the distance, I didn't necessarily love for them. I had Hawk and I and Money Ace in the race last week because um, I thought it was a much better fit. And Muddy Ace, um, I mean, we can watch it. It was a crazy race. I was very, very happy with how he performed there. Um, so if we look at is DGen After Dark. Oh, they don't have the winnings here, but he pulled in. He got second place out of 16. In a uh, 12 furlong left dirt. Um, which is just an absolutely wild race. Wild field. Um, and the, the winnings were paid out after. But I was very, very um, happy with how that... Oh, here we go. Yeah. So I got... You got a thousand um, prize pool for that. Thousand derby. 1,021.27 derby. So super, super happy with him in that performance. Yeah, he wasn't the strongest horse. A minus, there's a bunch of B pluses in here. B, uh, B plus, there's an A plus, there's an S minus in here. I ended up getting last. Oh, right dirt firm. Uh, that could explain some of it. But again, left turf soft, dialed in a little longer, but it was a free entry. So I figured, why not? Let's try it out. Let's get a data point there. And um, super, super happy with him and how he performed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm loving LTS. I'm looking to branch out a little bit, but like the pricing, the situation has to be right. So very cool. Well, I think we will wrap up uh, for now, chat. Again, give to a boy a follow. Thanks for tuning in. And yeah, these were my thoughts on breeding in photo finish. Appreciate you all.